All right, so basically this is gonna be your homework and I'm gonna go ahead and introduce to you what a binomial distribution is. And so the title of today's notes we could say is um, uh, binomial distributions. I'm gonna go here, let me slide it to the left. And I should wear my mask. So let me go get my mask on. Um, oh, great, let me get over here from the back. Mask. So here's a mask. So let's begin. Okay, so binomial distribution. Binomial distribution. Now, at the beginning of the lecture, it's going to seem that everything is artificial. But trust me, I think you're going to be fine, especially when I provide some examples from the homework. You should be fine. The Super Bowl is this weekend, right? All right. In order for me to watch the Super Bowl, I got to ride 50 miles of bike. I have to finish a week strong on weights, do over three hours to four hours of weights, and I got to be good on my diet. Then on, on the uh, Super Bowl, I can eat. Make sense? Oh, and I got to pull the gas tank from the, the new truck. Well, the old truck, but that's the first thing I'm doing, take out the gas tank. I'm right, making sure the engine can spin. You take out the gas tank and you clean it up because if it's been in a warehouse for three years, it's, you know, you don't run the risk of it having bad fuel, clogging up your injectors. All right, so the first condition, a binomial distribution is a type of distribution, a very specific type of discrete probability distribution. See, section 4.1 was on, you know, prob uh, discrete probability distributions. Now we're going to talk about very specific and very useful one. So number one, a binomial distribution must have a fixed number of trials. So we need to know how many times we're going to repeat the experiment. Exactly. It can't be open. Okay, number two, it has to have two outcomes, either two outcomes. And we refer to these as success or failure. We assign the letter P to success. And in this book, we sign the letter Q to failure. We also say that Q equals one minus P, and that'll become apparent when we when we work with it. So let me zoom in because some people cannot see. All right, the third thing is each trial, the probabilities must stay the same. So for instance, Let's say you have a jar full of marbles and you're gonna pick three marbles from it and you're not gonna put any of the marbles back. Does the probability, let's say there's red marbles and blue marbles. There's a probability that um, when you get three marbles without replacement, does it stay this consistent on each trial or does it change because we're taking, keeping the marbles in our hands? They're changing. So what, what the binomial distribution says is basically each time I do a trial, each time I repeat the experiment, the probabilities have to remain consistently the same. If there's changes, it's no longer binomial distribution. 
So those are the basic three conditions of, of a binomial distribution. Now, so let's do an ex example so we can identify each part of this. Let's say we have a we have a seventy five percent chance that a knee surgery will be successful. We are going to operate on three patients. Okay. Is this a binomial distribution or not? So now let's consider it. How many times are we going to try to operate? So is that a fixed amount or is that open-ended? So is the first condition met? Yes. So n equals to three, condition one is met. Condition two, do we have success or failure? Yes, we can clearly define that we can either have a successful knee surgery or not. So we do have by two binomial. You have two outcomes, two outcomes. So we could have a success or failure. So what is P here? What is the chance of success? So we write here 0.75. We write the decimal representation of success. And what would be our failure? It's 0.25. Remember to write as a decimal, 0.25. Yes, you have to, because percent, it like what's 75 divided by 100? 0.75. 75% per 100. We just write, instead of writing 0.75, we write 75%. But really that meant 0.75 and nobody told you. You just thought it was 75. No, it's 0.75. But nobody wants to talk in decimals. Percent per 100, 75 per 100, 75 divided by 100, 0.75. Got it? And three. Now, this is something I didn't talk about. Now, our random variable here, that's a concept that we haven't talked about. Our random variable here, our random variable means number of successes. In this case, no, numbers of, of good or successful knee surgeries, right? So we'll, we'll use X for it. So that's our random variable. That's what it means. What values can I have for it? So if I perform three operations, could I have no operation successful? Zero. Could I have one operation out of the three successful? Could I have two? Could I have three? Thank you. So these are all the possibilities that you can have in terms of success. Those are all the values you can allow X to have. Can you have four successful knee surgeries? Why? So, good guys. Hey, you guys are smart. I think this, this is my smartest class. Well, some people here are smart too, but their grades are not too good. Okay. Did, did you guys understand that example? Great. So let me give you another example. So let's say we have a jar with 10 marbles. The marbles? Um, I'm not sure if we did it. Yeah. Um, I must have been overzealous. We should have a we'll do it again. We have a jar with 10 marbles. 
Um, five of them, five of them are red. The others, of course, are not red, which is unnecessary to say. We take three marbles without replacement. Oh, this is a, in the previous one that we did, I didn't discuss the third condition. The third condition should have been, are each knee surgeries independent? Yes, because each surgery has the same chance. And, and one surgery that happened cannot affect another surgery. It has nothing to do with the other surgery. So independence was met. Independence was met. I forgot that. Independence was met, was met in the previous one. This one, the independence is not going to be met. No. Is it independent or not independent? Not independent. Well, let's, let's discuss it. There you go. There you go. We don't replace it. So you already got it. So this is, while the previous one is binomial, is a binomial distribution, we'll have a binomial distribution. This one will not. N is three, so it's fixed. This is good. Two, do we have, what's the probability of getting a red marble? There's 10 marbles, five of them are red. So it's 0. 0.5. What about Q? 0. 0.5. All right, so we have, we, we have the, the second condition met. Do we have the third condition of independence met? No, because we don't replace the marbles. Think about it for a second. We pick the first marble. It's red. I say it's red, the first marble. The next marble I'm going to pick, what's the probability of me picking the next marble? That's red. Four out of? Nine. Four out of nine, because the first probability would be five out of ten, and then the second probability would be four out of nine, and the third probability, assuming we got another red, will be three out of eight. The probabilities change. And let's not talk about if we didn't get a red. If we, get, if we didn't get a red, the probability on the probability of the first one for red is five out of ten. If we didn't get a red on the first draw, the probability of a red in a second draw would be five out of nine. So the probabilities will change as I execute the trials, therefore not independent, not independent. So, blah, and that's it, we're done. It's not binomial, not binomial. Correct. If it's not independent, it can't be binomial. Yes. Oh, I wish it was just that. So right now it gets a little bit harder, but it's not that hard. I think everybody will be fine here within the next 20 minutes. You're going to be just fine. So let me just write here fixed two outcomes. Two outcomes. Uh, Independence. I should really have done that in another. I, I completely misspelled independence up there. Incredible. Independence. And the last one, allowable values. All right, so now I'm gonna give you the formula for the binomial distribution and you're not gonna like it, but you're gonna to grow to like it. Not really, yeah, you're not gonna like it. Okay, so let me just drag this downward and then do it here too. So here is the formula for a binomial distribution. So,
we have p of x equals n c x p to the x q to the n minus x. There. That's the formula. That's the formula for binomial distribution. Guys, I'm gonna quickly use the restroom. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me make it prettier. Yeah, well, let me do it prettier. So, so here we go. Let me make it real pretty. Well, as pretty as I can make it. So it's little n, big C, x, p to the x, q to the n minus x. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. Yes. Yes. All right, let me just pause the recording and oh, What's the problem here? A lot of you don't know or don't remember what NCX means. But let's go to the easy part. The P stands for the success. The Q stands for the failure. The N stands for the amount of trials. The X, well, depends on the problem. It could stand for zero, one, two, three, whatever it is. The problem is what does NCX stand for? So let me tell you what NCX stands for. We call, we call this a combination, right? And it's NCX equals N factorial divided by N minus X factorial times X factorial. Did that clear it up? Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, it's not too bad, right? Yeah. Okay, let me, let me make it a little bit clearer for you. Uh, this is a C. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so read it to me. Read me. So say it. It's. So can somebody yell out N, but in a horrific voice, like yelling, like crying, like if you're going to get stabbed, like N, no, <laughs> I had one student do it for me yesterday. She did, but she, she's in drama class and she's just like a horrific, like, huh? Her name is Camila. <laughs> well, she did a good job and everybody was like, and it sounded real. Anyways. All right. N doesn't mean N, it means N factorial. So let me clarify what N factorial means. I'm gonna write, watch this, I'm gonna write a number. Five. <laughs> Four. Yes, but you yeah, it gets bad. Um, I hope. Why is it my camera on, on on Zoom? It's like it decided today I was too ugly. I'm not that ugly, guys, right? The, the screen sharing. I hope it works. The camera's off. Okay, I'll figure it out later. Okay, three factorial. Three times two times one. Two factorial, one factorial. What do you think zero factorial is? Zero. Uh, one. Yeah, why? Here's a nice little demonstration on why it's one. So I'll make a little bubble here. I'll put Y, I'll make an arrow. So look at four factorial. Couldn't I write four factorial as five factorial divided by five? See if you could, if you could see why I could do that. Isn't five factorial really four factorial, um, four factorial, five factorial divided by five? Okay, so tell me what five factorial is. 
And when I divide that by five, doesn't the fives cross out? And we're just left with four times three. You see it? You see it? You understand that? Okay, so now let's do three factorial. So shouldn't three factorial be four factorial divided by four? Right? It'd be, you see it, right? Does everybody see it? Why four factorial, uh, four factorial divided by four is just three factorial? Yes or no? Good. How about two factorial? Shouldn't it be three factorial divided by three? How about one factorial? Wouldn't one factorial be two factorial divided by two? And shouldn't zero factorial be one factorial divided by one? And the reason, so that's what happens. In order for our math not to break down, we have to allow that to be true. And therefore we must understand that zero factorial is one. It's no different than when we say, why is something to the zero power not zero? Why is it one? If you follow mathematical consistency and you follow your rules, you'll see why anything raised to the zero power is one. Do you remember why? Let's just, just easy. Could somebody tell me what five divided by five is? It's equal to one, right? Yeah. Now, what, what is the exponent of this five? Five to the first, right? Yeah. Okay. So what's five divided by five? One. One. What is the exponent of the numerator? Five to the? One. One. What's the exponent of the denominator? Five to the? Now, do you remember what rule we had when we had the same basis? Like, like if I put this right now, like if I put two to the third divided by two to the first, what's the result? Do you remember that from algebra? Two to the second, right? In other words, I'll just write it here. That's two times two times two divided by two. And so one of them canceled. So we said we were gonna subtract. So this is really two to the three minus one, which is two to the second. Does that make sense? So what's one minus one? That's why. That's why anything to the zero power is one. You see it? Because remember the base, the base rule was x to the m over x to the n equals x to the m minus n. If you have x to the m divided by x to the m, the same ones, then you get x to the m minus m, which is x to the zero, and you know it's gonna be one. Do okay, so I'll put another bubble around here. All right, so but we're not done. We gotta continue. I'm trying to be a teacher. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and challenge you to know how to do NCX. So I'm gonna make another arrow over here, and we'll begin here. Like those are our notes again. All right, now guys, those of you who are acting like students now, let me tell you what acting like a student is. I'm acting like a teacher, pretending to be a teacher, okay? When you pretend to be a student, then you're supposed to be paying attention. You're supposed to try to get in the right frame of mind because you're acting, right? And you need it to be like, you need to have people like, what is it, what's the word? You have to get people to, they, they gotta see that the act is real. Believe, yes, it has to be authentic. And therefore you did it oftenly, wouldn't you be a student? Is that all we are? Right? Anyways. Oh, you guys don't think like me, bro. What's wrong with you? Oh, we're all different. Yeah, I know. You need to have a savage mindset, guys. All right, so let me give you let me give you like a, a problem to do. Let's say I ask you to do five C two. So can you do it? I'll write the formula on top of it in blue. No, in rainbow. Right on top of it? Yeah, I'll just so you can like not have to look to the left, but you can see it. 
Yuk, Nami. See if you can do it. Yes, and solve for it. See if you can do it. I'm going to go over it. Don't worry. We have another quarantine student. Don't read the news because there's no point in reading the news because it makes you angry sometimes. So what's N? Right? Yeah, you can do it. What is it? Okay, that, that sounds like a right answer to me. As you can see, I'm proceeding on the board to solving it. Come on, you can do it. Five times four times three times two times one. That's a number. Three times two times one times two times one. And then just, you know, that. But these were left over. So five times four is 20. And two times one is two. 20 divided by two is 10. <laughs> now, you. this is a combination. In other words, um, if you have five objects and um, you're going to rearrange them in two ways, how many ways could you do it? Where order does that matter? So let, let me show you what that means. Let me show you what this means, really. So let's say you have the letters. I'm just thinking of a name right now. I can't be my name because my name is has two M's that that don't work. Um, the name is Tapper. That's not a real name, but let's just say it was a name. Wait, wait, I can rearrange that to. Okay, leave it there. Let me let me just change this to an S. Taser. So that's it. Okay. That's how you're going to get tased. Okay. Because you weren't paying attention to your teacher. So you got tased. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> you taste students. No. Anyways. Well. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about this. Imagine. Imagine I had to rearrange those letters two ways. So I can have a T and an A, and I can't repeat them, obviously. Or a T and an S, or a T and an E, or a T and an R, or maybe an A and a T, an A and an S, an A and an E. Um, now there's a there's a there's something interesting that can happen here. Yes, let's just keep on. A E or A R. And then we have S T S A S E S R. And then um we have E T E A E S E R. I have R T R A 
R S R E. Now, how many ways do we have there? Five. What's what's five times four? Twenty. There are twenty ways to rearrange this, but in, that means we're saying that a a t and t a are different. This is what we call a permutation. This is what we call a permutation. But now let's say, and this is kind of important because if I, if I allow the, the words to go back in, then it changes a little bit, but let's say A, T and T A are the same. So I get to X this out and T, S and S, T are the same. And T E and E T are the same, and T R and R T are the same, right? And then A S and S A are the same, and A E and S E are the same, and A R and R A are the same, right? And then A E. Sorry, now we go to the next one. And S, E, and E, S is the same. And then S, R, and R, S are the same. So that I get to, you see what I'm doing, right? How many do I have left? You saw what I had to do? How many do I have left? That is what this map here got you to do. It says there are only 10 ways I can rearrange. Okay, this is my... There are only 10 ways I can rearrange five letters, two ways, all right, where order does not matter. If the order matter, that means that TA and AT are two different things. So that's called a permutation. See, a permutation, the formula for a permutation is NPR or NPX, where in this, you can't see it, of course. So NPX, let me write NPX. So did I write NPR before? No, I wrote NPX. So NCX. Uh, so NCX, the, the formula for a permutation is N factorial divided by N minus X factorial, and you're done. Now notice the difference. So this is a permutation. And this is a combination. Notice the difference between the formulas. They're almost exactly the same, except there. So this is a combination. Here, order matters. Here, order does not matter. So if you do 5P2, you get 5 factorial divided by five minus two factorial. So that's five factorial divided by three factorial, which is five times four times three times two times one divided by three times two times one. And this comes out to 20. You see it, right? And so what, and the other one, we knew that five C2 came out to 10 when we did the math on top. So that's what allowed me to do that. Get it? Now, why is this important? Because that's where the, the C comes from. We, we use it because we're playing this game where we're counting stuff. Okay, so why is this important? Well, let's take a look at some examples. So I'll do one example from the homework and hopefully that'll be enough to get you guys going. And then I'll do another lecture on explaining these things very carefully next class. So you can get ready for a, a very simple quiz on this because this is just introductory. You'll see this again in college. So we're scrolling all the way up to number 15. Does she bark? 
Okay, it says there, let's do the one that talks about surgeries. So we're doing number 16. Let me do it in writing. So it says there, a surgical technique is performed on seven patients. You're told there's a 70% chance of success. Find a probability of surgery is successful for exactly five patients, and part B is at least five patients, and part C is less than five patients. So I'll go ahead and do it at the bottom here. So it says there, a surgical technique is performed on seven patients. So how many patients did we perform the technique on? Is that fixed? Yes. Um, what's the chance of success here? 0.7. What's the chance of failure? Perfect. Now, so is independence achieved? Yeah, each surgery has independence from the next one. So the one surgery doesn't affect the surgery, the next surgery. So it's independent. Um, what are the allowable X's here? What can we have for X? Can we have zero successes? Can we have one, two, three, all the way to? So those are all the allowable values of X's. So now it says part A. What is the probability uh, X equals to five? That we have five successful surgeries. So we have five successful surgeries. So let's write down the formula. The problem, uh, let me make it prettier. So the, let's write the formula for a probability distribution. Probability of X equals NC X and uh, P to the X Q to the N minus X. So the probability of five must equal seven C five point seven to the fifth point three to the seven minus five. So roughly speaking, not roughly speaking, exactly speaking, this is 0.70 to the fifth times, I'll put the times here, everything gets multiplied, times 0.30 to the second. Yes, you use the formula. Now, there's a button in your calculator that can get 7C5 for you automatically. I'm not gonna teach that to you today. Okay, for those of you who have a calculator, let me teach you quickly how to do it on the calculator so you won't have to get it wrong. So if you have a Casio calculator, you press the on button first. Now the end there is seven. Now there's different Casio calculators, so you, you don't, may not have it. And if you look at divide, you see the NCR on divide? You have a different one. You press shift, that one, and then you put, in this case, a five, and you get 21. All right, I'll go around to each individual person. You have seven. 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 Seven.
And you have to work on one minus seven. Oh, I got an engineer. Nine press eight. <laughs> Anybody else talk to ears? I'll run over there, yes. I'm being a teacher. I got it. I got it. Okay. So, seven. Oh, I got that. Then go down. So, NCR is NCR. And then you can just read the I got I got that. 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 I Seven, what happened? How do you get the 21? I know how to do this. This is the part So now you got 21 for NCR. So we're going to multiply it by 0. 0.70 to the fifth times 0. 0.30 to the second. And the resulting probability will be exactly the probability for five, five successful surgeries, I think it was. Now, Got a few more minutes before class is over. And those of you who are getting late, try to rectify that the best you can. It's a good habit to be on time. Remember, we have a limited amount of time on this earth. Use it effectively. At all. Yeah, yeah. So let's just do 21 times 0.70 raised to the fifth. And then multiply that times 0.30 raised to the second. And we get approximately 0 0.302, 302526. Now, part B says, if you read part B, it says at least eight. Oh, sorry. Part B says at least five patients so it's saying that the probability of x is at least five greater than or equal to five okay 21 oh i put 20 bro okay let me change it because i put instead of putting 21 somehow i ended up pressing a 20 so the answer is 0 0.31 0 0.31 Seven six five two. Sorry about that. Okay, so what about part B? How do we do part B? It's saying at least five. So guess what? At least five will be probability of five plus a probability of six plus a probability of seven. So to answer part B, to answer part B, you have to do five, six, and seven. So you literally have to go to you have to figure out 7C5.70 to the fifth, which you already found, times 0.30 to the second. And then you have to do 7C6.70 to the sixth 
0.30 to the first. And I get to do plus 7C7, 0 0.70 to the seven, 0.30 to the zero. Well, you, you, you just get 7C5 and you just multiply it through. Now, there's a special button for in the calculator, but some of the more advanced calculators, that will get you that more quickly. But you don't have that. Some of you don't have that. Look at look at C. Do we have a part C to this? Um, oops. I don't want it to rain. Because I'm trying to see the pool's leaking water, and now there's no way it's going to be leaking water. It's going to be all filled. Okay, and the last one was less than five patients. Don't worry about the answer. The answer is important, but can you do the setup? What's the probability of X being less than five? Well, that's zero plus a probability of one plus a probability of two plus a probability of three plus a probability of four. Do I have to add five? Do I have to? It's less than five. So does five count? There you go. By the way, by the way, this is something super important. And then I got to just leave you with one more thing. Remember, you're going to do 7Z0, 0 0.70 to the 0 times 0 0.30 to the 7 plus 7Z1, 0 0.70 to the 1st times 0 0.30 to the 6 plus 7Z2, 0 0.70 to the 2nd, 0.30 to the 5th plus 7C3, point 70 to the third, times point 30 to the fourth, plus 7C4, point 70 to the fourth, point 30 to the third. You have to do all those. Now, what's interesting is, what interesting is, is if you two, if you do all these, if you do the probability of zero, plus a probability of one, all the way to the probability of seven, guess what it adds up to? One. one. Now, since we're at the end of class, I should tell you that the mean, and I'll just put it here in a bubble. I'll make a bubble for you guys. The mean equals N times P. So I'll show it to you. Yes. Yes, on the board. So the mean for a binomial distribution is n times p. I'll, I'll show you how we get that next class. The variance is n times p times q. So this is the variance. And the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, of course. And that's how you would just get. So it's much easier than before for our binomial distribution. And binomial distributions are plentiful. They're everywhere. Like you can, they're so easy to, to make. You know, you might have a survey or a question, yes or no, or, you know, it could be something classical, like picking marbles or something like that. Okay, so I think that's it for today. I pretend to be a teacher long enough. Mr. Ricky's problems with the chart. 12.30.